One of the most common reasons why people get frustrated about cardiac troponin is the problem of false positives. Now it's true that there are lots of reasons why you might get a troponin elevation when you're not having an acute myocardial infarction. Most of the time, they're not really false positives though, because troponin is measuring myocardial injury and there are lots of different causes of myocardial injury. Sometimes, however, you will get a high troponin and the patient will have no myocardial injury whatsoever. And one of the reasons why that might happen is because of problems with troponin antibodies. And that's what I'm gonna talk about right here, right now. I'm gonna talk about troponin antibodies, the problems they cause us with false positive and false negative test results, how to recognize that that might be happening and what to do about it. So I'm gonna present a fictional case here, just to reassure you, it is fictional, based on my experience with real life cases, but to preserve an anonymity, the details are completely and utterly fictional. So the case is a 25 year old woman who presents to the emergency department with pain in the center and right side of her chest. It's pleuritic in nature, so it doesn't sound cardiac from the description of the pain. The patient has no past medical history. She's got no family history of cardiac disease. She reports no drug use. She's not on any medication. She has an entirely normal physical examination, normal vital signs, and she looks very well. She's ambulatory. So I guess your index of suspicion for cardiac problems is pretty low. Her ECG here looks pretty normal, but someone's measured a cardiac troponin concentration at triage and that was very helpful of them. But the troponin has come back really high. So we've measured a cardiac troponin T, 99th percentile is 14 in nanograms per litre, should be a little lower than that in women. And the level that we've got is 1,035, so grossly elevated. Big surprise, because we didn't expect that. So what do we do about that? Well, the first thing is that troponin level has been repeated, which is quite okay, exactly what you should do. And the repeat at three hours shows a level of 1,080. So it's gone up a little bit, it seems. But remember that imprecision of assays is expressed in percentages. So while we prefer absolute changes in troponin, that change of 55 at that really high level is still a very small percentage of the absolute figure. So that could just be a bit of analytical variation creeping in with this very high troponin level. It's a kind of static troponin level. The patient, though, worried everyone. Why has she got such high troponin levels? So let's say in this fictional case, she goes on and has, as often happens, a battery of investigations, including coronary angiography, a cardiac MR scan, echocardiography. She has a CTPA. She has some anti-nuclear antibodies. And she has lots of other blood work. All of it comes back entirely normal. So we've got an entirely normal, extensive workup but we've got grossly elevated troponin levels and they're not changing too much. So what's going on here? Well, to understand this, we need to understand some of the problems that we might get with troponin and how tests work, because that's really critical to understanding this. So this slide just shows you a basic overview of how a cardiac troponin test works. So we've got an electrode uh, and attached to that is a capture antibody. Now that will bind to an area of the cardiac troponin molecule. And then a detection antibody comes along. And on one end of that de detection antibody, there's something that's going to cause a signal. In this case, it's ruthenium. Uh, and when that happens, we can generate the signal, which is light. And we can count the amount of light that, or quantify the amount of light that comes uh, off this um, troponin molecule that has detection and capture antibodies attached to it. And that's how we can work out how much troponin there is in the system. The antibodies are obviously key to this because it's an immunoassay. Now this can go wrong in rare circumstances. First of all, the patient might have their own anti-troponin antibodies. So in this case, we've got a capture antibody that's bound to the troponin, but the patient's own anti-troponin antibody has already bound to the detection area. That means that the detection antibody of the assay can't bind with its attached ruthenium molecule, and therefore we can't get a light signal. 
So we can't count the troponin that's actually being captured. And that means that we can get a false negative result. So this is one circumstance where we might get a normal troponin level, but actually the, tropo the patient had a myocardial injury. That's a really tricky one because we've got to then use our index of suspicion to decide that this might be a false negative. Really hard to detect. Another problem that we might get is that the patient has what's called a heterophilic antibody. This is really bad luck because a heterophilic antibody can cross link the capture and the detection antibodies. So here, this pink antibody is bound to the detection antibody and to the capture antibody. So we then get a light signal from the assay. It's bound to the electrode, it's bound to the detection antibody. And so we're going to get a light signal and we're going to get a false positive troponin result because of this heterophilic antibody, even though there's no actual troponin around. A third problem that we might have is macro troponin. So this occurs when a patient has antibodies that makes their troponin molecules stick together. And this can happen. Now, when that happens, it takes longer for the body to clear the troponin complexes and you can lead to very high troponin results and they won't change over time because this is macro troponin these troponin complexes are around in the circulation they're not really being cleared so you'll see really high troponin levels and they won't change on serial sampling so what should we do if we think we might have a false positive from analytical interference? Now, clearly in the case of this 25 year old lady with non-cardiac sounding chest pain, normal ECG and an extensive normal workup, we're really thinking something's going on with the assay here. So we're thinking it might be an analytical interference. So the first thing we've got to think about is, is when we might suspect analytical interference. So it's a clinically low risk patient, perhaps, and other investigation results are normal. So it seems incongruent to get this high troponin. Uh, and we've demonstrated that there's no clear rising or falling pattern of troponin. So this is when we should suspect that something has gone awry and there might be an analytical interference. What do we do next? Well, the first thing is repeat the test to see if those levels are stable. So be sure that it's a stable level and not a rise or a fall. In the case of a macro troponin, you're not really going to see that much change. In the case of heterophilic antibodies, it's the same. These antibodies should be there all of the time. So you're going to get a consistently high troponin level. And if you suspect it, speak to the lab, the biochemistry lab. They can do a whole load of things with that sample to try and understand if it is an analytical interference with antibodies. The first thing they can do is retest the sample with a different troponin assay. So they might send it out to a different hospital, for example, and see if you get the same result. If you get a completely normal result, it's a real red flag that you've got an analytical interference. Or they could do some very clever things to try and block the heterophilic antibodies or use polyethylene glycol or use uh, get rid of the immunoglobulins in the sample uh, and they can then articulate whether or, or help you to understand whether actually there's an analytical interference. So there's some further reading here. If you scan this QR code, I'll put the link in the chat. You'll see an article written by Ola Hammerstein as first author. I was privileged to be part of the group as part of the International Federation for Clinical Chemistry Committee for Cardiac Biomarkers. And it gives you a really nice overview of this topic. So hopefully that's given you a nice overview of immune interferences in troponin assays and how they might cause either false negative or false positive troponin results.